Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Slam, cloud solution architect from Microsoft Hong Kong. I focus on application and infrastructure platform. Today, my topic is options for data in the cloud. So here is my agenda, okay? Actually, we will look into our data options for you in our cloud platform, including our, our blob storage for your unstructured data, Azure SQL database for your structured data, like some uh, RDBMS tables or something like that. And um, a new one is Cosmos DB. Actually, we will, we will look into Cosmos DB, which is a high performance platform, which is a globally distributed turnkey solution for you, okay? Especially from, for some IoT solutions and, and some high throughput requirement applications, yeah. Okay, so let's pretty pretty take into look into an an importance of uh, the importance of data to your enter to enterprise. So actually, to a modern enterprise, actually we have to be able to provision new services quickly within short time frame. Especially for some latest applications, we may have uh, a a a short, a short development a short deployment time frame nowadays. Uh, and actually, we have to minimize the impact of new services in the existing environments. Um, so data is very important. So we so in our cloud platform, we are providing um, different solutions for you, okay, including our blob storage, our Cosmos database, and so on. Okay, and one more thing is uh, we have to leverage the appropriate tools for your job, as always, and reduce your over overhead. As you can see, this is the the full lineup of our Azure services in the cloud platform. And uh, actually, you could see that in the data pillar, okay, actually in the data pillar, we have different services, including SQL database and data warehouse and our Cosmos DB, something like that. Actually, based on different scenarios, we may use different options for you, okay? And of course, uh, all our data services can be integrated natively with, with the other cloud services in our cloud platform on Azure. So we try to facilitate a, an intelligent platform for you. So which options do you pick? This is always a question the customer asks us. Okay, so to answer this question, actually we have to understand how your data is. Okay. For example, you may have some structured data in some traditional IT environment, like your RDBMS database, okay, that is classified as structured data. Okay. And um uh, to in, in, in some modernized applications, we may, we, may, we may make use of some uh, JSON template XML files to, to record your data records, okay? That is classified as unstructured data as always, okay? So we have our options for you. And uh, finally, semi-structured data. In the, in the modernized application development environment, we may have some photos, videos, even some text files, log files to be included in the applications for operation. And that is classified as semi-structured data, okay? So just some real, -time, real, life, real life example here is a product catalog that is classified as a structured data as always, like some, like some uh, product information in a tables, okay? And uh, product photos that is classified as unstructured data. Photos and even videos are also in the same category. And for sales data, this example is quite common in the in the in the market. Actually, that is always semi-structured. For example, we may have some sales data in some Excel spreadsheet, in some CSV files which is export from our sales system, or we may have some um, some 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 text files to record some sales records temporarily. Okay. So sometimes we may make use of all of these kind of data to 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 analyze our business. So. So in the modernized enterprise, we may always have all these kinds of data available. So we have to find a way to handle that. Oh, the first one is um, Azure Blob Storage. So uh, in this map, you could see that we have uh, more than 50, 58 regions in the world nowadays, okay? And actually we are still growing, okay? And uh, as you could see that almost in every area in the world, we have our data centers. And actually you can, you can just, um, you can imagine Imagine in every data center, we have your storage options. So you can host your, da your data in almost all our data centers in, in the real life. So this is the, the lineup of our Azure storage services. We have a blob storage here that we want to highlight today. Okay. Actually, you could see that this is a highly scalable storage 
platform in the cloud, and actually you can um, that is web API available. That means you can easily integrate your applications to our blob storage with your programming problems. Okay, so we call that object storage. Actually, you could also leverage different tiers of blob storage in our cloud platform. Like um, by default, that is a hot 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 tier storage. That means you can put your data in our blob storage. Actually, uh, you can even tier your data, move your data into the other the other tiers of storage, like cool storage or archive storage, which is based on your needs totally. Okay, so we will talk about in detail this this tiers in detail in next few slides. And of course, we have our page blobs, which is actually VM disk for your virtual machines. Now we will focus on blob storage. So technically, that is um, that is that is for storing your unstructured data. No matter that is from your app or app or web application, okay, or that is from your backup and archive data, and or or you have your big data and IoT solutions. You can leverage blob storage to host all your data inside. And as I just mentioned, we have different tiers here, okay, from premium, hot, cool, and archive. Actually, you could see that the price difference is price and effort among different tiers from archive to, to premium. Actually, but but actually in each tiers, we have some benefits for you. Actually, like um, if you can see that for premium tiers, the, the, the speed is quite high. Actually, we have a we have a we have a low latency performance on, on the premium tiers. For hot tiers, we have a general usage performance for you. For two tiers, that is for serving our backups, archive or DR data. Okay. And if you want to archive your old data, okay, like some, uh, for example, for in some industry, for example, in, in finance industry, they may have to store some documents with customer data for a certain period as a retention as a retention policy. So you can leverage archive tiers to optimize your running costs. Okay. So we have different tiers for you. So between different tiers, we can make use of our latest life cycle management feature here. That means you can you can you can let our system to to handle the tiering of data for you from hot to true, from hot to archive, even true to archive, or even to purge your data. You can leverage our life cycle management by rules. Okay. So as you can see in this screen, you can define your rules here. Like um, if you want to archive your data from hot from hot storage to archive tier. You can define a timestamp here. Like after 30 days, you, the system will automatically archive your data from your hot storage to archive storage. So we try to make our storage options to be more flexible and easy to manage. And in this page, you can see that um, we 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 can we can serve different scenarios from different applications categories, like um, web application, your CDN. Like some media services or something like that on your web, okay. So you can you can leverage our blob storage to 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 suit your needs. And a quick summary is uh, for blob storage is a uh, limitless scale. Actually, you can just uh, scale your blob storage by our system automatically. You can just put your data in your blob storage account, and we will handle the scaling for you automatically. And of course, that is globally accessible. So, as I just mentioned before, we have uh, 55 data, 55 regions in the Azure platform. So you can host your data in any regions. If you have some globally distributed applications, you may leverage this benefit. And uh, the third point is cost effective. Actually, you can just um, leverage our blob storage to archive your data in different tiers. Actually, you can optimize your data storage cost for long term. So let's quickly look into our blob storage interface. As you can see, that this is a our, our Azure portal, and I have a storage account here, like uh, like this one. Okay, I I also have an application surface plan here. That means we host our web here. So, in this example, we will we will launch our web app to upload some data to blob storage. As you can see there in the screen, we can get into the app surface first. As you can see that we have a URL here. I will click into the URL to launch the website. This is a image uploader. So you can just drag and drop your image to here. And, and the application will upload the, the image to the backend blob storage. 
as you to see that this is an application configuration screen like this. We define our storage account name, which is the blob storage account in backend. And of course, we have defined some containers here. That means in the blob storage, we have some containers to host specific kind of data. So this is for images, okay. So let's go to the um, storage account. This is a storage blob, blob storage account setting screen. As you could see that we have a name here, we have our we have our information of blob storage account, and we have our containers, and we have different options for you. And this is an a, a overview insights about the about the performance of the storage account. Click into containers. We have two containers. One is images. The other one is uh, thumbnails. So we have some settings for you, like uh, the assets tiers of the storage, cool and hot. By default, all the data is encrypted as well, and you can bring your own key if you want. And of course, we support geo reputation like this. Uh, you can just enable your reputation, your data reputation to any other regions of Asia based on your needs. So let's go into the storage explorer, okay? You can see that in the images container, we have no files here at this moment. Now we will try to upload a file. We should upload an image here, okay? Now we just try and drop an image here, and we go back to the blob storage to check. Let's go back into the storage account. This is the storage explorer. See, we have uploaded three images to the blob storage account quickly. And actually you can see that we have a we have the default tier, which is hot tier. And you can further tier the data into different tiers of the storage account by life cycle management based on your rules. And of course you can change the content type if you need. Okay. By default, it, it is the octet stream type. That means if you if you get the storage blob URL, you can just access by browser and download the image. If you want to display the image in your website, your web application, you can change the dot type as well. So this is um, this is how we facilitate your application design. So we just finished the file upload, and all the data is stored into the into the blob storage account already. Okay, just quickly look into the blob storage. So you can just imagine to, 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 to leverage this blob storage in your application, like some web apps and even any kind of applications. Just, uh, just bear in mind that blob storage is a West API based blob storage account. That means you have to use your program application, you use a program to call our API to retrieve the images. You cannot just map the drive like SMB storage. That is, blob storage is not kind of SMB storage. This is for native integration storage for your application. Okay, now the next one is a relational data, okay. If you have some relational data, like some table in your database, you may leverage Azure SQL database. So as you may know that uh, we have launched our SQL Server for many years in the world. Now we uh, now we convert, or I would say now we transform our SQL Server database into Azure Cloud Platform as a native platform services. As you could see that um, actually this is, um, we have a full lineup of database services as a platform service in our Azure platform. Azure SQL database is one key component of it. And of course, we still have MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres SQL, and Data Warehouse. Actually, we have uh, different surface tiers in Azure SQL database, okay, from single database, elastic pool, to managed instance. I would say um, single database is the best for your native SaaS applications with a guaranteed database performance. For example, you may just, um, just purchase a, a specific Transaction is specific performance unit in your single database of, C of Azure SQL, okay? So it can guarantee your performance on the application. But if you are hosting some multi-tenant applications for your multiple customers or BU's department, something like that, you can 
leverage our elastic pool of database. Okay, so that means you can purchase a specific transaction unit of your database, and then and and the system will automat automatically assign the the computing power to your databases in the pool. So this is for multi-tenant applications as a, with a shared database environment. Another thing is a uh, managed instance. Actually, for example, if you want to um, just lift and shift, I would say migration, okay? If you want to migrate your existing on-premises SQL Server or the other database to cloud platform, you may consider managed instance because this is a, a fully managed SQL Server over in our cloud platform. Um, and almost all the features, almost all the features of Citro Server is available in this managed instance, but this is a managed services. So you do not have to handle any virtual machine. You do not have to handle any patching, any, any infrastructure design and something like that. That is totally a managed services in our platform. So let's quickly look into our Azure Citro database. You can imagine that we can just um, we we can simply provision a database instance in our Azure Cloud Platform through the portal or through PowerShell commands. Okay, and afterwards you will see that um, you can just download the you can just leverage the management studio of SQL Server. That is the same tool that you use to manage our SQL Server in the past. Okay, same tools, and then you can just um, log into your database. You can access your data perform your database operations, like indexing your CTO queries and something like that. Okay, uh, you could see that this is our Azure portal. When I log into Azure portal, you could see that I have some uh, CTO database here. Just bear in mind that we still have a CTO server here. As you could see, this logo is a CTO server. First of all, before you provision a CTO database in Azure CTO, you have to provision a CTO server. But this is not virtual machine. This is just an identity. Just, just a component in the portal. You just click few buttons to provision a server. Give it a name, define the network setting, define the firewall setting, and something like that. Afterwards, you can enable, you can provision your CTO database. As you could see that based on this CTO server, I have two CTO database provisioned already, okay? And so you can just uh, imagine that is, a, a, that is a, a platform service for you. So let's look into how to manage this CTO database. When I click into the Citro server itself, you'll see that we have some settings here, and you can provision your database. When I click into the Citro server, this is the server admin portal, and you can just um, you just you, you can find find out the server name here, okay, like this one, okay. Actually, the server name is like this. The first, the first prefix is the is your database server name, and after that, that is database.windows.net. We will make use of this server name to log into the management studio for your operations later. And we have two databases here. You can even de define your failover groups. You can check your database instance. You can check the history of import export and something like that. And we have some security features like this one. You could see that you can configure your firewall rules here, just like this one. I just add my client IP. That is my host, my host machine that I work in. Okay. So you can add the IP here to let the Citro server firewall to allow your op your operations through this machine. And of course, you can add this Citro server instance to a existing virtual network in your Azure platform. So imagine that you are allowed to do some network traffic filtering as well for your firewall with this way. So we also have something like the TDE, Transparent Data Encryption. That means um, actually this feature was in our CTO Server Enterprise Edition in the past. If you if you did purchase the, the on-premises CTO Server, you may see this function before. So Transparent Data Encryption means that all your data tables will be encrypted transparently in backend. That means if you have applications to be integrated to call your, your CTO server instance, you do not have to change any tops. You do not have to change your connection string and something like that. So we bring your <clears throat> we also bring this at once feature from CTO server enterprise to Azure CTO without any additional charges. And imagine that <clears throat> you can bring your own key as well. 
By default, that is surface managed key. That means <clears throat> the encryption key is generated by Azure Platform automatically. And of course, for some customers who has uh, specific compliance requirements, you may just bring your own key. So you can you can choose customer managed key, okay? And it can it can even integrate with your hardware security module as well with key vault. Okay, so let's continue. And we also have some uh, advanced feature here. You, you can have some tuning features and something like that. Let's take into the database. Actually, this is our, our CTO database instance. You can just see that. Let me, let me skip to database. No. You can see that we can just uh, scale your database one by one, actually. As you could see that you can just uh, do some geo repetition as well. For example, you can just um, enable your data repetition between different Azure data center. By default, that is East Asia, and uh, you can choose any regions in the world. So imagine that if you want to deploy some DR solution on your database platform, you can easily enable this geo repetition. So this is your connection string as well. So if your application want to, you want to integrate your application to integrate with this Citro database, you can easily use this connection string for different drivers. Okay, ABO.NET, JDBC for Java, ODBC, PHP, and even the other drivers. You can just easily leverage this resource to connect. Like some sam we have some simple groups, we have some sample groups here. And of course, you can sync your data to uh, to other database. And as you can see, TDE I just mentioned, you can just enable that or disable that based on specific database instance as well. And of course, from the server perspective, you can also enable that. And we have a dynamic data masking feature. That means in the database table, you can choose, you can selectively to mask your data. Even the administrator cannot see the the real data in back end. So. We try to enable some advanced feature to protect all your data in our platform. And of course, we have uh, many features here. So you can just feel free to enable a trial or time later to explore that. Okay, now I try to skip to the other part. Actually, I want to show you the Citro capability. Like that, yeah. So if you want to explore the Citro database, you can just enable a trial account and, um, and, and download a management studio and launch your database to try. Okay, let's try out. So just a quick demo for you about Azure Citro database. Actually, you could see that uh, we can easily provision a database here, and we can just um, we can just um, just just enable your database platform with our portal or PowerShell, and you can use your Citro Server Management Studio as well to manage all your data. Okay, we just uh, log into a uh, relational database on your on the cloud platform. That is our Azure Citro database. Um, as we know that you may have some needs to, um, to, to deploy your application in cloud platform with some secrets. Secrets may mean your, your encryption certificates or your encryption keys. Like uh, if you want to deploy applications, you may have to encrypt all your data with your specific key in your, com in your company. So we have some, some, some tools to facilitate this need for you. So this is our key vault actually. Okay. Some one common question is uh, if I want to deploy applications to our cloud platform or any cloud platform, you may just ask, you may want to ask how to manage my keys and secrets. Okay. Actually, we have a way for you here. That is our Azure key vault. Okay. Some common questions, maybe I need a safe place to save the key or my certificate. I want to uh, reuse my secret in my all, the, my, all my applications to handle my uh, role-based access control list. Okay. 
So you can just um, so now you can have a solution on Azure T Vault. You can store your T or search in the Azure T Vault as a centralized repository, which has our secure protection as well. And of course, we want to we want to offer a single place for you to host your T and search. So Azure T Vault is, is your choice. So features highlight is like this. Actually, we are out of a central access to T's and secrets. We are also fulfilling a FIPS 140-2 certificates with validated hardware security modules like Talus. Okay. Um, this is a this may be one special requirement for some customers, especially some uh, finance companies. They may have to fulfill FIPS 140-2 requirements from compliance perspective. In that case, you can leverage our Azure T vault to do this thing. Okay. So just uh, make use of your hardware security module, generate your key or search, and then you can just um, use our API call to import your secret into our Azure T vault on our cloud platform. And after that, you can leverage our Azure Active Directory to handle your permission definitions. Okay. So I would say that is a brand new access control for our Azure Active Directory. So how it works, you can see this diagram. Actually, you have a HSM deployed in your company. Okay. And this, this is usually made, made one example is a uh, Talus. They are offering some hardware security modules for the industry. So you can leverage Talus to host this thing. And actually it helps you to be compliant from compliance perspective. Okay. And uh, just one more thing to share is um, in some in some in some regions we are also offering a managed HSM in inside our data center. That means the large HSM can be hosted inside Azure Data Center as well. But this is uh, this is now available in some in some specific Azure regions as well. Okay. If you want more information, you may contact us as well for to understand more. So you can separate the key owner from developer as well by the key vote. And of course, the deployment is quick. Okay? So we just go to Azure portal, or you can use PowerShell to run field commands to provision a, a, an Azure key vote here. Okay, let's quickly look into the, the interface of Azure key vote. Okay, as you could see that we are in the Azure portal here. This is the Azure key vote. And uh, in the first page of Azure T-Vault, we have our DNS name of your of your Azure T-Vault. You may make use of this DNS name to access your T-Vault on Azure through your script or programs. And of course, we have some uh, basic monitoring information here. You can just uh, quickly look into the number of requests and the latency of the T-Vault performance and something like that. And uh, of course, we have some in-depth monitoring tools to integrate with T-Vault, like our Azure monitoring, Azure Monitor. So you can leverage these tools to do this thing, to monitor your performance of Keyvolt. Okay, let's see the demonstration. Actually, in the Keyvolt interface, you can see that we could uh, check the basic information. And uh, this is the DNS name I just mentioned. You can uh, look into the details about the monitoring metrics. Okay, let's go into the key, map, the key tab, okay? We have some key, we can we can put some keys here by menu import or generation. Okay, so you can um, and of course you can just um, use your programming code to upload your key and let your applications to access. So we can just manually do this thing here. We have a perfect we have a uh, interface for you, and you can put your search as well. You can see that I have some secrets here. Okay, you can just put your search with this interface. Just give a name and input the value. And you can also define the activation date and the expiration date of your key or secret. Just click create. So your secret is here. The interface is quite easy to use actually. And you can also restore a backup of key to here manually. Just like this one, you can also maintain the version of your key. You can have multiple versions of your key here.
And of course, we have some policy for you, like some retention policy, or it can help to renew your T as well. It depends on your 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 requirement. And of course, you can attach your CA, your your certificate, over a TC like DJ Cert, to automatically automatically handle your T. And of course, you can enable or disable the access to your key with some operations like um, virtual machine deployment or, or Azure Resource Manager template deployment. That is our ARM ARM template. If you have um, a, a if you have a, a big infrastructure, you want to automate the deployment process, you may make use of ARM template. So you can integrate ARM template deployment with this key vault. And uh, Azure, D, Azure DS encryption for your virtual machines can be integrated with this Azure default as well. For networking, you can also control from network perspective. So this is the, a quick look into our default. So in short, actually we are we are trying to fulfill your compliance requirements with our with our Azure default, especially the one I just mentioned, FIPS 140-2. This is specifically for some industry like um, finance or government. And so this is uh, this is the whole picture of our compliance overruns. Nowadays, we have more than 90, more than 90 compliance certificates, which is available in our Azure Cloud Platform. So that means from deployment perspective, you can just, um, we can reduce the time of deployment of your applications with our compliance certificates. Because we are, our infrastructure is already compliant with these certificates. You can just uh, run your run your audit workflow with your application layer to uh, to to enable your whole solution to be compliant. So we try to make your work easier with our compliance platform. Okay, we just uh, quickly look into. Um, a way to protect your encryption key, your your, your encryption ports, and your en encryption shards, and your uh, secrets of your applications. Now we want to uh, take a look into a new thing. Okay, that is our high performance database platform, which is named Cosmos Database in Azure Platform. Uh, nowadays, your app, your modern applications may always face new challenges, like. Um, we, we may have some applications which is facing all of the users in the world. Maybe you have uh, your end users in overseas who may want to access your applications and your data in any time, anywhere. And uh, we, we, we want to have a, have a distributed database platform to handle these needs. But we also need a highly responsive database platform. Traditionally, that is not easy to, to, to fulfill both requirements. But now in, with, uh, with Azure Cosmos database, we try to fulfill this requirement with our globally distributed turnkey database platform. And of course, we can just uh, allow you to scale your throughput and storage based on your need, based on your demand, okay? So we will look into the details very soon. So Azure Cosmos DB is, a, as I just mentioned, that is a global distribution distributed database platform that is massively scalable. That means you can enable your, uh, your response unit anytime, anywhere by few mouse clicks. And uh, actually we are supporting multi-models as well. You could see that we are supporting different APIs like Table API, Cassandra, which is quite famous in the open source world, uh, that we also support SQL API, which may be, may be, may be quite familiar with those database administrator. We support MongoDB API, okay? We support Gremlin API as well. So you can just uh, leverage different model, different API to deploy your database platform and enable your applications to be to be globally accessible. And uh, one more key thing is this is a turnkey solution. Let's imagine if you want to enable a, a scalable database, database platform, you just need to do mouse, field mouse click to enable your database in Cosmos DB to select your regions you want to deploy into, okay? And uh, of course, we have our SLA surface level agreement, which is higher than 99% as well. This is, this is one of the highest, highest SLA in the same type of database platform in the industry. 
So this is our comprehensive SLA, which which is our commitment actually. As you could see that we are offering five nights. That is a 99.999%, almost 100% SLA. This is one of the highest SLA in the industry in the same kind of database platform. And uh, from the latency perspective, we are also offering, offering a less than 10 millisecond guaranteed performance for you for more than 99% of time. So this is also a, in, in our financial back SLA agreement as well. And uh, throughput and consistency is also our guaranteed. So uh, you can easily scale out your, your, your database performance and storage. For example, you can just uh, scale your throughput from 10 to 100 times of millions of requests per second across multiple regions. Assuming that um, how, uh, how, we could, how we could calculate our request per second, actually we are based on a 1KB, a 1KB document size per second in our calculation. So you, we have some ways for you to calculate later on. So you just need to pay only for the throughput and the storage disk you need. So turnkey global solution is, a, is actually an attractive solution for you to host your distributed application in the web. Just, um, just like actually we are, we, are, we, are, we, are already, we are already providing Cosmos database in all our Azure regions. And of course you can handle your failover policy with many words or you can enable automatic failover as well, just like you maintain your traditional database system. And we have our RU calculator. You can just input your needs, like um, how many regions you, you required to deploy, how many of storage you want to deploy, and, um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the width and width per second per region. So we will come up a, a ballpark factor for you. So you can just um, easily estimate how much you, want, you need to spend in the Cosmos database. Okay, let's just, uh, just quickly look into the Cosmos database interface. As you can see, this is the Azure portal as well. Okay, in my portal, I, I have provisioned a application surface here. I have provisioned a um, a Cosmos database account. I have a virtual network here. So let's start. So we will just uh, we will first go into the application here. This is a web application to add web talk and edit web talk. So see, this is our the the URL of our web app. We will just launch this web app here. Like this is a list of two items. We can just create new items or delete items here. And the data will be stored in Cosmos database. So this is the URI of our Cosmos DB. So in your programming problems, you may just leverage this URI to access your Cosmos DB with the encryption key as well for security mechanism. So you can enable the web application here easily by field tricks. And we have a different consistency level for you to choose. You, by default, that is, a, that is a, a section. Consistency level, you can just uh, define what you need based on what you need. And you can, you can choose the network you want to attach with your Cosmos database. And uh, your encryption key is here. We have two encryption keys. And of course, you can bring your own key if you need based on your company needs. So this is um, the, the, the matrix of your Cosmos DB. You can see the performance, you can see how much you are spending. And this is using the, uh, the 443 network port as well, just like some typical HTTPS web services. And we have one container here, that is item. We want to store the items into our task database. The full put is uh, 400 RU, 400 repress unit, 400 repress unit per second. And of course, from monitoring perspective, you can just um, do some filtering to show the data for last seven days or even 30 days. And you can just get the log data to, the, to our log analytics for further analytics of your log to understand the performance. And we have a data explorer and we will show that later on. Yeah, this is the data explorer. We have our task database. We have our item container here. 
there is no web plot here yet, so we will do some insert action. Okay. For example, I in the web form, I want to input a a web plot with name, description, and a completed field. That is a flag, a, a boolean flag. Okay. So when we click create button, the data web plot is stored in the Cosmos database automatically. And we input two web plot here. App development. Deploy ASP, something like that. Click create as well. So we have two records here in the website. When we go back to the data explorer, which is inside our portal, we have two records in the Cosmos database. That is a, a key pair combination. You can see that the data record is like this. Uh, it has an ID of the record. It has the, uh, it has the information we entered, name, description. That, that is the data we entered in the form. And the Boolean flag and some internal IDs. Okay. So we have two records here. Actually, quite, that is quite simple to, to, to insert data, just like a, just in a, in a TED format, in a JSON format as well. So when we go back to here, we can see the situation is like this. We can even delete the record. You could see that uh, we are just um, handling the data CL CLUD actions here. Actually, that is quite easy. Not a not a very, very different operations. You just need to leverage the Cosmos database API for the insert, update, delete operation. So just like you manage the typical database systems, okay? So we just uh, practically look into four options for your data in the cloud platform. Actually, um, actually we are. Uh, Actually, we are providing four different options for all your data, for different categories of your data to be hosted in our cloud platform. Okay, so some key takeaways here. Actually, we, we think it's important to understand the kind of data you have, like structure, unstructured, semi-structured data. For different type of data, we have different ways to handle, just like the options I shared before. And uh, so, from Blob Storage, Azure SQL Database, T-Vote, and Cosmos DB. I believe we must have a solution which is suitable for you. So uh, just feel, please, feel free, please feel free to explore the data options from these documentations. This is our, our documentation to test start. So now we, are, now we want to, we, we are going to take some questions. Just feel free to raise out your questions in your screen.